I'm aware that many of you have expressed a desire for online counseling, and to that effect, we have a sponsor who will help you and assist you in that respect. So if you will, go beneath the video, you'll find a link to our online counseling sponsor. They, they have a whole team of counselors that can help you. Uh, practice self-care, get the help that you need. Through the years, as I've spoken with many, many people about trying to come to terms with the strains and difficulties in their life, I try to stay as reality-based as possible. I mean, it's, it's nice to have ideals to aim for, but we have to just be anchored in what our truth tells us. One of the biggest realities is the longer you stay into any kind of relationship, whether we're talking about the person you live with or your kids or extended family members, friendships, work relations, the longer you're in these relationships, you're going to be susceptible to conflict. Tension can come. Disagreements can come. Differing opinions and preferences and priorities show up. You can tell a lot about a person's maturity by the way they respond to those conflicts. Now, there are some individuals when they come into conflict with you, they're going to go straight into the super aggressive mode. You've been exposed to those kind of people and they can just unload all sorts of uh, rude and harsh and mean spirited responses to you. Uh, I recall so well a, a young uh, mom and dad sitting in my office and the, she was uh, so frustrated because the uh, just previous to coming into my office, he had had a really strong and overbearing uh, interaction with their little five-year-old kid and the kid fell apart crying and, and uh, the mother was so frustrated and he was in my office trying to explain and rationalize why he needed to do what he did. And her comment was, well, congratulations, you succeeded in bullying a five-year-old kid into compliance. How about that? <laughs> she was being kind of sarcastic, but he just kind of sat there like, he didn't have a response because she was right. You know, there, there are times when people have this bullying and this forceful and pushy style. And what they'll do is they'll go into hard blame, coercive communication. Uh, they, they can go into forcefulness. They can go into name calling and cursing and, and, uh, and all sorts of irrational kinds of uh, emotional reactions. And they can be belligerent and, and uh, critical and difficult to get along with. And it's what I refer to as spending $20 on a, a five cent problem. Uh, they can just go way overboard. And of course, in the, uh, the wake of it, then you have a whole lot of frustration, resentment on both sides of the equation. There are two questions that I like to ask individuals when uh, I'm talking with them about using that uh, overly aggressive approach towards conflict. One is exactly what are you trying to accomplish? Now, typically, these people will say something like, well, I'm tired of having to put up with all sorts of illogical kind of things, or somebody around here needs to make sure that things go right, and, and uh, other individuals just aren't doing it. Well, what they're doing is they're trying to give a rationale, but they're not answering the question. What are you hoping to accomplish when you go into that super aggressive mode? And the answer is simple. Control. It, it's like, I want to control what's inside the mind of that other person. And taking it a little bit further, what they're trying to accomplish is subordination too. Uh, they're wanting to be so controlling that they put others in a subordinate role and they want it to be uh, left with no ambiguity. Uh, I'm, a, I'm uh, above you, you're beneath me, let's make no mistake about it. I'm the dominant one here and let's make sure that we just continue with that understanding intact. And then a second question that I have is, well, when you take that over, uh, that super aggressive controlling style, how successful is that in terms of building the future for that relationship? And of course, when you look at it, the answer is not at all. The only thing you're uh, accomplishing is resentment and, uh, and rebellion and uh, suppressed emotion and um, all sorts of dysfunctional forms of communication. What are you hoping to accomplish? 
Uh, when you go into that control, you ignore the fact that every human being has a free will and we need to talk with each other about our conflicts with that understanding in mind. And there are ways to do that. I've spoken at other times about a healthy assertiveness. And then when you're, uh, you're realizing and all I'm doing is harming the relationship, you'd like to think that these hyper aggressive individuals would think, you know, maybe it's time for me to change my tune. Typically they won't. But I'd like to kind of point out several truths that go along with this super aggressive approach that if that person is ever to see the light, maybe these truths could get them there. The, the probability is rather low, but it's good for you to know where you're coming from. See, one of the truths is um, when you have to approach people with aggression and you're trying to get some form of agreement because of that aggression, there's going to be no lasting cooperation that comes from that. I want you to think about the logic. If you have to coerce and shame somebody into coordinating with you, exactly what do you have at the end of it all? <laughs> that person is going to do it only to keep you quiet or because of intimidation and all. And there's, it's not going to be gratifying for either side of the equation. Uh, the one who's being overbearing, uh, they're not going to have the satisfaction of knowing, yeah, we have a real nice connection here. And the person who's on the receiving end, it certainly isn't going to be satisfied. Uh, aggressive anger makes no sense uh, logically when you break it down like that. Another thing, uh, when you approach uh, your conflict resolution with this super aggression, you're illustrating the depth of your own insecurity. The, the implication is that you've decided, I can't really afford to state whatever it is I feel and perceive in a normal tone of voice because I'm, I'm really afraid that no one will take me seriously. Now, why is that? <laughs> have you have you uh, developed a reputation of being so antagonistic or so difficult that people just don't want to listen to you? Uh, the, the, the confident approach is the calm approach. And when you talk and you reason with somebody and you let them walk away with your dignity intact, that's how you get influence. Aggressive people haven't figured that out because they're sitting on a huge, huge uh, pile of insecurity that they've not come to terms with. In addition, the, the deeper you go into your aggression, uh, the more it implies that you have a, an overall pessimistic view of humanity. Now, uh, you, you might, the, the aggressive person might say, no, it's not humanity, it's just that one person over there in front of me. And my reaction is, okay, let's suppose we uh, rearrange the script here and it's somebody else that's on the stage. I can promise you're going to be the same way towards that person as you are towards the original one. Uh, aggressive individuals have a pessimism thinking, you know, life stinks. It's no good. People are no good. And there, there's, uh, there's a, a lack of feeling about general goodness that's there in life. They can blame everybody else, but the bottom line is, they don't believe in the goodness of other individuals. You know, if you treat people well, uh, at least your, your odds of getting some sort of uh, positive uh, uh, impact are going to be increased. Maybe you could try that. Uh, in addition, uh, the, the more you go into your own hard aggression, you actually perpetuate the very disillusionment that you say that you're wishing to get rid of. You know, when you uh, imply the, the reason for your aggression is that you're just trying to make people quit doing some uh, things that are so stupid. Well, all you're doing is you're, uh, you're keeping the, uh, the feeling of discomfort alive, uh, which then gives you that much more reason to complain about it again later on. It makes no sense. A, a super aggression is an anti-love approach to life. And it, it implies that that individual who is going into that aggressiveness uh, has decided, you know, whether love is ever going to exist or not, I, I don't believe that it can now. And it, it's, a, it's a very sad approach to, uh, to engaging with other individuals. Uh, when you've lost any sense of optimism, when you've lost any approach that includes goodness, it implies that you have such a hurt on the inside and such a, a woundedness on the inside uh, that you, you've uh, you've convinced yourself that the only way you're going to get anywhere good is to treat people in an improper fashion. What I'm wishing to say when I talk with these hyper-aggressive people is summarized in one word, and that is think. You know, what's going on here? Like I say, what are you trying to accomplish and how successful are your relationships because of your aggressiveness? It doesn't work. And then uh, there's another strong implication in what I'm saying, and that is you have choices. 
Aggression is a choice, but it's a really rotten choice. What are the better alternatives? Now, if you're the one who has to live with that hyper-aggressive person, I hope that you don't allow yourself to get caught in the in the uh, back and forth counterflow where they become super aggressive. So, uh, so you become every bit as inappropriate in response to that. I'm hoping you can be the one that says, well, I'm going to maintain my sense of civility. I'm going to maintain my clean boundaries and my proper assertiveness and uh, my consequences, but I'm not going into that insulting style. I'd like for that uh, hyper-aggressive person to say, you know, I, I think I need to make that adjustment too. But in the event that they don't, I hope that there are going to be some of us that are committed to the much cleaner and more sensible way of managing conflict. Join me in being one of those that says, I want to stay on Team Healthy. Watch how it works. I hope that videos such as this give you some things to think about and to concentrate on in your own personal growth. If you've not already just, uh, uh, hit that subscribe button for our Dr. Les Carter channel, I would invite you to do so. You know, I also have the Surviving Narcissism channel, and we, we address things a little bit differently over here on this channel. Uh, and so uh, keep coming around, and, and uh, when you hit the uh, subscribe and the notification, we'll keep more videos coming toward you. In addition, it could be that you've decided that you could use some counseling, and I would strongly encourage you to seek that out if that's the case. If you don't have someone in your immediate area, we have a sponsor who uh, can take you to online counseling. There's a, they have a whole team uh, of uh, licensed professional experienced counselors, and we have a link below that would take you to that. In addition, we have our resources like my free to be course. It's a very extensive course about finding yourself despite the controllers in your life. We have others uh, coming along. We have one called This Is Me that's going to be coming pretty soon about setting boundaries. We have our webinars that we sponsor, etc. And then we also have our books, The Anger Trap, When Pleasing You Is Killing Me, those kind of things. So avail yourself to those resources. You know, I, I know that hyper-aggressive person can wear you out, but I'm hoping that you can have enough sensibility that says, I'm establishing myself as the person of uh, decency and civility, and, uh, and I, I can't let somebody else who's unhinged dictate the kind of person that I'm going to be. In that case, you become the person of stability and steadiness, and I'm, I'm hoping you can uh, embrace that role fully.